रुचिका बेटा हैव सम हनी ओके मा हम्म यमी बेटा व्हिच फ्रूट विल यू हैव बनाना इट्स माय फेवरेट हे रुचिका लेट्स गो मा आई एम गोइंग आउट टू प्ले रुचिका वेट हैव दिस फर्स्ट वेट इट्स जस्ट प्लेइंग वाटर There you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Ruchika. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Ruchika finish your meal before going to bed. Okay ma. Good night. Good night. Okay. Let's start a discussion by talking about my favorite thing, food. After all, it is impossible to talk about carbohydrates without talking about food. You probably heard of people avoiding carbs to stay in shape or even that carbs are bad for you and bad for your health. Well, maybe. But let me ask you, how many of you like eating desserts? You know, I really love cakes and desserts, and I'm sure most of you do as well. But not just cakes, there's cookies, sweets, toffees, chocolates, sometimes even fruits when i feel a little guilty. Now, what do these food items have in common? Sugar, right? They all have sugar in some form or another. And when i say sugar, many of you would be thinking about the crystals that we use in our daily lives. I'm here to tell you that that is only one among many types of sugars called sucrose. In fact, every single food item that we listed is made up of a different type of sugar like fructose in fruits or if you have glucon d you know there's glucose in that if that's not interesting enough even our blood the blood that flows through our veins is basically made of some sugars now you may be watching your weight or trying to evade desserts but what about rice or wheat or even fiber in raw leafy vegetables can you avoid all of this or evade all of these no right and guess what even they contain sugars so sugars are important because they belong to a class of compounds called carbohydrates in this particular subtopic we will discuss in general about the various carbohydrates their chemical properties and anything that makes them special all of us have a basic understanding of carbohydrates or carbs as they are referred to these days We know that they make up most of our food items like rice, wheat, etc. Now, if you're a fitness enthusiast, you're probably following a low-carb diet to stay in shape, or you might even avoid carbs at night, assuming that they would help in weight loss or something like that. Now, sorry to break it to you, but none of that is actually required to stay in shape. Eating in moderation and exercising regularly will go a long way in keeping you fit and healthy. All right, fitness talk aside. in chemistry we are interested in the actual composition of carbohydrates when scientists started figuring this out they looked at many members of this class of compounds and found a basic formula which describes this class of compounds this formula was given as cx h2o y now do keep in mind that the number of carbons and water or h2o need not be the same here if we take a look at this we see carbon and water hence carbohydrate this is why they were given this name but unfortunately this is not entirely accurate take a look at acetic acid for example its chemical formula is uh, ch3cooh we can also write it as uh, c2h4o2 or as c2h2o2 right and this follows the generic formula of a carbohydrate which is cxh2oy But let me tell you that acetic acid is not a carbohydrate. Conversely, if you look at rhamnose, a compound that has a formula of C6H12O5 and one that doesn't fit into the generic CxH2Oy format, it is actually a carbohydrate. So, we can see that this definition cannot be used and therefore we had to come up with a new probably better one. Now for this we will sort the basics of structures of molecules the functional groups that are present in them their interaction with light and simple properties to define what we call the class of carbohydrates 
Therefore, carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones or the compounds which produce such units on hydrolysis. We can understand from this that all carbohydrates are optically active. And as you know, this means that they can rotate the plane of polarized light that passes through it. And of course, they also cannot be superimposed on themselves. Also, it is important to note that all carbohydrates either have an aldehyde group or a ketone group and are polyhydroxy, meaning they have more than one hydroxyl group. We will see that there are many compounds which upon hydrolysis produce units that exhibit properties of carbohydrates. Now, what is hydrolysis? It is nothing but breaking down a certain bonds with the help of water molecules. And you might already be familiar with this. Now, we saw initially that sugars were a part of carbohydrates and are sweet in taste. This is why carbohydrates were given the name saccharides from the Greek word saccharon to denote sugar. Now, you know that there are carbohydrates which are not sweet in taste too, right? Which means they're not sugars. And you have examples of this which include starch, which is found in potatoes or cellulose, which is found in plant cell walls. Now, these are carbohydrates too, but they're non-sugars. Carbohydrates can be classified into sugars and non-sugars, as we just saw. Now, they can also be classified based on their ability to undergo hydrolysis into three major groups. Monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides, as you can see here. Now, let's begin by talking about monosaccharides. Look at the clue in their name. The keyword here is mono or one. A carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler units of polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone is called a monosaccharide. As the name suggests, they are made up of just one saccharide unit. Simply put, we cannot use water to break these down into smaller units because these are the smallest units that we can have. Now, they can be further classified depending on whether there is an aldehyde group here, which is in this case it's known as an aldose, or if it has a ketone functional group, in which case it is known as ketos. About 20 monosaccharides are known to occur in nature. We will look at the names and structures of these very soon. Let's now move on to oligosaccharides though. Carbohydrates that yield 2 to 10 monosaccharide units on hydrolysis are called oligosaccharides. This means that water is able to break these compounds down to smaller units, which are in turn monosaccharides. Now, these can further be classified based on the number of monosaccharide units it produces on hydrolysis. So you can have disaccharides, trisaccharides, you get the idea, right? The most common ones among these are disaccharides. Now, it is important to mention here that the monosaccharide units we get after hydrolysis may not always be the same one. For example, sucrose, a disaccharide, gives glucose and fructose, which are two different monosaccharides upon hydrolysis. But maltose, which is also a disaccharide, will give you two units of glucose on hydrolysis. A common example of a trisaccharide is raffinose, which gives galactose, glucose and fructose on hydrolysis. Now, there are many such examples of oligosaccharides. Finally, we have carbohydrates which yield a large number of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. These guys are called polysaccharides. Some common examples here include starch, cellulose, glycogen, gums, etc. Now, if you look at the table, you see that polysaccharides are put under non-sugars, whereas monosaccharides and oligosaccharides are put under sugars. And this is precisely because there is no polysaccharide which is sweet in taste. So all polysaccharides as such are non-sugars. There is one more way in which carbohydrates are classified, and that is based on a different chemical property, that is, their reducing nature. They can either be reducing sugars or non-reducing sugars. The carbohydrates which give positive tolerance and feelings test results, that is, they're able to reduce the tolerance reagent and the feelings reagents, are called reducing sugars. All the others which give a negative test, that is, they're not able to reduce them, are called non-reducing sugars. Some oligosaccharides and polysaccharides fall under these kind of classification. We will see that all monosaccharides are reducing sugars with no exceptions. For a more detailed discussion on the mechanism of tolerance test and feelings test, you can go back to the carbonyl chapter for a recap.